Well, Your Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very, very warm welcome to the stunning venue of the Waldorf Astoria here on the Palm Jumeirah. Welcome to the top Indian leaders for 2016, brought to you, of course, by Forbes Middle East. My name's Richard, Richard Dean, and I'll be your master of ceremonies for this evening, an evening where we applaud and recognize for the fourth time now the top Indian leaders who are heading up some of the most prosperous, some of the game-changing businesses across the Arab world on behalf of Forbes Middle East and, of course, our partners this evening. I'd like to thank you for joining us here tonight. It promised to be a glittering celebration, recognizing the remarkable achievements of some truly remarkable people. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all of us at the Waldorf Astoria, I'd like to wish you a very warm welcome to tonight's dinner to celebrate and recognize the top Indian leaders in the Arab world. I'd like to thank Forbes magazine, especially for selecting us for tonight's prestigious dinner and take the opportunity to wish you all a wonderful evening, bon appetit, and of course, good luck to all the nominees. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, on behalf of Forbes Middle East, the whole team, Welcome to our fourth annual event, celebrating the region's top Indian leaders. Um, as Richard said, this is my first time at this event, and it's spectacular. Um, we are delighted to see so many inspirational individuals here tonight, um, some of whom also look familiar to me. It is without question that Indian expats have for many years been a major influencer in the GCC. Whether by running the multi-billion dollar companies that bring continued prosperity to the region, or by laying the bricks and foundations of our famous skylines and growing infrastructure, the Indian community has literally helped to build these countries. And it continues to have a major impact on the development and strength of the societies and economies throughout the Arab world. Our awards tonight in particular celebrate the top Indian leaders for 2016, which this year features two categories. One, recognizing the achievements of 100 Indian entrepreneurs who have forged large enterprises within our region. And one, acknowledging 50 who have climbed the corporate ladder and today are driving growth through executive management positions. And just to give you a brief idea of the diverse industries covered by our ranking, 20 of the 100 entrepreneurs own diversified companies. 13 operate in the retail sector and nine, manufacture and trade industrial goods. And of the 50 top business executives, 18 occupy leadership positions in financial services. Now, as Richard mentioned earlier, the relationship between the Middle East and India has been built over centuries. And as we look ahead with stronger ties than ever, we look forward to further mutual support, investment, and success for both of these global powers. On this note, I would again like to thank our partners for this evening's event. Altaya Travel Group, Kaliji Times, CTV, and Dubai Eye. And now, before making way for the rest of tonight's proceedings, please join me in welcoming to the stage our very, very special guest tonight, the Indian Ambassador to the UAE, His Excellency, Mr. T.P. Shatharaman. What a distinguished gathering we have today. Can we talk about the state of the economy? I'm sure with so many successful business people here, there's no doubt that the economy is doing very well and is poised to do even better. The top Indian leaders of the Gulf world. I must thank Forbes Middle East for asking me to come here for the third time in a row to hand out these awards. It's extremely important that we succeed in whatever we do and still important that we are recognized for what we do. I think it is Abraham Lincoln who said that when you are not, not recognized, don't worry but strive to do things that aim at recognition. So it's not so important whether each and every one of you win the award today, but you are 
already in the Forbes list. The contribution of the Indian business people to this part of the world is very well known and acknowledged to be very significant. And that contribution will be even more important in the years to come as not only the people-to-people -people relationship between India and this region, but also the government-to-government -government relationship sees what I would call a sea change. In the last one year, you have seen the Prime Minister of India eventually coming to this part of the world, beginning with UAE. And he has also recently visited Saudi Arabia. I read in the newspapers that his next stop in this part of the region is to Qatar. I think these important high-level political visits, including the one recently in February by the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi to India, all these signal how the relationship between these parts are becoming more strategic, going beyond the transactional to engage in a mutually beneficial, comprehensive strategic partnership. We are today talking to each other of doing business in a number of areas which were not even thought possible, say, a year ago. I'm referring to the huge potential that's likely to open up in the defense production sector for which India has got very ambitious plans. I'm also referring to the kind of cooperation in the energy sector where it's not only importing crude from this region, but India as is looking at investing in the oil companies in this region, beginning with Abu Dhabi. We are talking about joint projects of a very big nature, whether it be in infrastructure or in semiconductors and in areas like renewable energy, all of which we find that there has been considerable engagement and investment by countries in this region. I know that in Dubai and Abu Dhabi and Sharjah and so on, there are Indian business and professional councils where you gather to, to talk about, to network and to do more in terms of advancing your interests. I hope that we can go beyond that instead of looking at such organizations only on the basis of a single emirate. I think it is perhaps time for us to have an India UAE business forum. And this will be not just for Indian business people, it should have equal participation and enthusiastic participation of the Emirati businessmen. Such a forum that will bring us together will take us beyond just buying and selling and actually result in significant major endeavors which will, of course, use all your talent, use all the success that you have already demonstrated, but will quantum leap the kind of potential for cooperation that exists between India and the Arab world. We have begun to consult people from the Emirati side and we, I find great enthusiasm for it. And I'm sure if each one of you bring four of your Emirati friends to such a forum, we will have a very successful India UAE business forum that will uh, demonstrate what 
our countries can do together. I would like to congratulate all of you who are winners today. I don't know who are the winners and who are not. I hope you know. But certainly congratulations to every one of you. And uh, you know, as a diplomat, we are not allowed to stay in one country for too long. Roughly three years is the normal term. And this is my third year already for the Forbes Award. The reason why we are not allowed to stay too long is that diplomats develop a disease called localitis. I don't know if Dr. Mopan, you have heard of this disease. A localitis is when a diplomat who is sent from one country to another becomes more of a diplomat of that country where he is located in rather than his own country. This is a danger that we all face, especially here in UAE. So, I will not be back here handing out awards from the next year onwards for Forbes. I think I'll have to start an enterprise of my own and wait for a few years to qualify to come on to this stage. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here.